watch it all the way in, watch it all the way out. Let the breath be comfortable, don't force it too much. Okay, not too long, not too short, not too deep, not too shallow. Just let the breath breathe just right. This is giving your mind a good place to stay in the present moment. And it wouldn't want to stay unless it's comfortable. So give it a sense of ease, sense of comfort right here. That's why we're looking after the mind and taking the precepts as we did just now. We're looking after our actions and we're looking at our, after our words. This quality of looking after ourselves is important. And it's not because we are concerned only about ourselves. After all, when you are not killing, you're not the only one who's benefiting. The people you might have killed or the animals you might have killed, they benefit as well. When you don't steal, you don't have illicit sex, you don't lie, you don't take intoxicants, you're not the only one who benefits. People around you benefit too. And at the same time, you're setting a good example. And if everybody is really careless in their behavior, then other people will see that and they'll c continue being careless. But some people will see that there's the people here who are restrained in their behavior, who have principles in their behavior, and they see that it's inspiring, and they get inspired to act that way as well. So that's one of the ways in which, another way in which looking after yourself is also looking after other people. And the Buddha does encourage you when there are times when you see that other people are making mistakes, other people are doing harm, that if it's the right time and the right place, okay, then you should talk to them about it. In other words, you encourage them to try to hold by the standards you're holding to. This is one of the reasons why we have to hold to these standards, because if you tell other people that they should abstain from harming other beings, but you're harming people, your words are not going to have any power. But even then, you have to be careful about the right time and the right place. As the Buddha said, when you give advice of this sort, you have to think, one, is it true? Two, is this really going to be beneficial? And three, is this the right time and the right place to say this? If it's not, you save it for later. Because otherwise, if you're trying to teach somebody when they're not in the mood to listen, as one of the John says, it's like taking good food but stuffing it in their ear. It's not the right place for the food to go. They wouldn't want it. And they don't benefit from it. You certainly are put to a lot of needless trouble. You have to wait until, okay, you find where the mouth is, and then you put the food in their mouth. In other words, you look at the, the other person and see where is the opening where you can talk to that person about this. And in that way, you don't get harmed, the other person gets, gets benefits from this. They learn something good, and they learn it at a moment when they're ready to receive it. So the fact that we're looking after ourselves doesn't mean we don't care about other people. We care very much about other people. We care about everybody. It's all around. So by looking after your thoughts, words, and deeds, okay, you're looking after yourself, you're looking after other people too. You're not harming them, you're setting a good example. And then when you do want to give them advice, you've got to, the fact that your example is there, that makes your words a lot more believable. But you do have to use your wisdom and discernment when's the right time to speak and when is not, because that can make all the difference in the world. <laughs>